Our next speaker joined Toastmasters in 2006. At that time, he had heard good, bad, and plain ugly speaker introductions. I hope there's not ugly. <laughs> a few great ones. Tonight, he shares tips for presenters, masters of ceremony, whether it's here at Toastmasters or in real life. When done right, you and I, you and your presenter's messages will be better received by the audience. Audience, guaranteed. Please welcome the singer's Toastmaster, Nick Smith. As Steve alluded to, I've been a Toastmaster for 16 years, and there's a bit of a, a showman in me, and I've worked in broadcast, and I know that a solid introduction can really help a speaker get off on the right foot and really prepare the audience to receive the message that the speaker, maybe that's you, is going to share. I'd also like you to consider the introduction I just asked Steve to read for me, and if you have any suggestions on maybe how that could have gone better, pass those to my evaluator after the conclusion of the speech, maybe considering some of the goals and other tidbits I share with you regarding a better speaker introduction. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and our welcome guest. Now, to be clear, I'm talking about a speaker intro, like Steve just did. Steve introduced me by talking about me before I came up to set the stage and, and give me the stage to present in front of you. There's also an introduction that's part of the body of a speech, and that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the little mini speech given before a speaker is given the stage. When you write an introduction, you have a few goals. Primarily, you're setting the topic. You're telling us what the speech is about. Perhaps you're sharing your title. Here at Toastmasters, we give speeches that are based on projects. So tell us which project it's about. If you're speaking to a pretend audience, because that ha happens frequently, you may be talking to the board of directors, let us know so that you're giving the audience here appropriate context to receive your presentation properly. Another goal of your speech introduction is to tell us who you are or the speaker is, the qualifications, their experience. Why should the audience listen to that speaker? You're looking to make an impact. The why. Why does the audience care? Pick their interests. Sell the benefits of this presentation you're going to share with them. You want to make sure you're gauging the proper level of formality in your introduction. There's a difference between your introduction if you're giving the eulogy at someone's funeral versus talking about why you danced with AZ at the picnic on Sunday. <laughs> you imagine there's a different level of humor and formality involved in that. Introductions should have the appropriate amount of brevity. Typically here at Toastmasters, 15 to 30 seconds is probably a good amount of time for you to shoot for when you're thinking about how the topics master will introduce you if you're writing the introduction for them. I should have mentioned too, if you are writing an introduction or when you're writing an introduction, you're writing it in the voice of the Toastmaster of the day or the general evaluator. You know, you're, you're providing that master of ceremonies who's introducing you with the specific wording that they're going to read for you. That's not always the case. In real life, you may just provide some biographical details and they may build the speech. But in this case here, you're just because of the logistics and the fact we meet and people don't have time, you know what your content, your speech is about. You're writing the introduction and it's ending up on the little printout here that has a balloon attached to it here. And it's read in the Toastmaster of the Day's voice. Finally, introductions should have a strong finish. Compare these two introductions I've written here. Our next speaker climbs mountains, scuba dives. It was, he was an Apollo astronaut. Please welcome John Doe to the lectern. Versus, our next speaker walks over hills, skips puddles because he's scared of water and hates cold places. Please welcome John Doe. Hear the difference, right? A strong finish to your introduction, ending with just that person's name, concluding that mini speech and giving the audience a cue to begin applauding their introduction to the stage and just makes it more powerful. Now, not just for the speakers, the Toastmaster of the day also, I have some, some tips for that individual as well here. 
sometimes, believe it or not, Daniel, mm -hmm. you find yourself introducing a speaker and there is no introduction provided to you. It happens. Yeah. And what I see happen a lot is <laughs> our next speaker didn't give me an introduction and broadcasting it to the whole world. And no, your job up here as Toastmaster of the day is to make things smooth and as flawless as, as possible. It's let the evaluator deal with the fact that an introduction, an important part of the speech making process here <laughs> wasn't done. Just keep it simple. Our next speaker is John Doe. <laughs> or if you have their project information, our next speaker is giving his icebreaker from the presentation mastery path. Please help me welcome John Doe. Again, right? Ending with that name and just keeping it simple. If you're comfortable enough, you may want to improvise a little bit too. Our next speaker is a good friend of mine, he's my mentor, he's been with Toastmasters for decades, he's a great speaker, and tonight he's giving his, uh, his icebreaker from the presentation mastery, blah, 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 right? Fine, do that, Be you're, that's okay, have some fun with it. Just if you're careful for improvising and you add that extra content before your introduction as Toastmaster of the day, that you don't just then switch in the mode and read exactly what they, what they, what they write here. Try to, try to make it smoother, try to segue it better. So you might say, our next speaker is a good friend of mine, they've been a long time Toastmaster, blah, 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 and then go, our next speaker joined Toastmasters in 2006. No, no, you can skip the part, because they wrote this in your words, but you adjusted your language, so try to adjust the introduction to be more smooth if you introduce them. It's a little advanced, but as you get more comfortable up here, have some fun with it. Another important tip, if you're Toastmaster today or MC, is to practice. Practice grammar. I see this happen all the time. When we're writing the introductions, sometimes we miss a word, sometimes the grammar isn't the, the best. And if you're just reading this for the very first time and you haven't had a chance to practice, you may read out that grammatical error. Whereas you have you taken some time to practice it before the meeting, or at least before you take the stage, you might realize there's a grammatical error and be able to fix it real quick and, and again, give a less flawed uh, performance as Toastmaster of the day. It also, if you're practicing, gives you a chance to practice embellishment, right? Just like I did before. Next speaker walks over hills, skips puddles, John Doe! Right? Have some fun and practice that embellishment in your head. And of course, you always want to do what you can to know how to pronounce names. It doesn't happen so much here because we're all friends, but if you find yourself in the real world or it's a bigger event introducing a speaker, it's nice to be able to pronounce their name correctly. So that's why it's important to practice so you have a good understanding of what their name is and how it's pronounced. So there you go. If you're running an introduction, make sure you're telling us what you're talking about. Make sure you tell us who you are, what your qualifications are. Make an impact by selling the benefits of that speech. Have the right formality. Make the introduction the right amount of time and have that strong finish with your name. And if you're Toastmaster today, have some fun with it. Make up an introduction smoothly if someone doesn't provide it. And practice, practice, practice. And you'll help our speeches here at Plantation Toastmasters sparkle. Mr. Toastmaster. Yay!